Hey folks, welcome back to the farm. We're in the kitchen. We've been at the auction all day. Finally got home to see my lovely wife Kelly. And we're going to make some supper. We're going to make Runza wraps. If you've never had those, stick around. They're so good. Now, Runza is a staple here in Nebraska. Um, it's a kind of a meat pocket, kind of like a hot pocket. It's got cabbage and hamburger and onions and stuff like that in it. And they do different variations at the Runza restaurant. Now, every nationality has their uh, meat-filled bread pocket. Uh, Italians have their calzones. Uh, the Spanish people have their empanadas. Uh, everybody's got one. So let's do the Runza one. So we're going to use our big skillet to start with. We're going to use half of a kind of small head of cabbage. You can see how big this is compared to my hand. So let's get this sliced up really thin. We have our half a head of cabbage and about a half a cup of water to get things going. We're going to turn this thing on high. Put the lid on. We'll start cooking that cabbage down. We're going to slice up a big onion now. So just found out about a fresh onion, so we go to the freezer, get our onions that we processed from the garden and put in the freezer. Handy dandy. So all we got to do is take this out, throw that in the pot, let it thaw out right in the pot. Now the Runza sandwich here in Nebraska was brought to the Great Plains by some German-Russian immigrants way back in the day. It was originally called Berok, and it kind of evolved into a pirog, or pirogi is another kind of version of that. It was all kind of based on that same with different pronunciations. Now, it became a Runza. They opened the Runza restaurant. I don't know where the Runza name came from unless the family just came up with that name. But uh, they're in Iowa, Colorado, I think Missouri now. They've kind of spread out in Nebraska. It's a really good restaurant. They got fantastic burgers too. But like I said, it's a kind of a hot pocket. It's a um, meat and cabbage with onions filled in bread. Some of them have cheese in them. There's all different versions of them now. But I haven't been eating a lot of bread, neither has Kelly. So we make the filling and we put it in our wraps. And we really enjoyed it that way. And that's the way we're making it tonight. As this starts breaking down... We're going to go in with a little salt and pepper. Help draw that moisture out of that cabbage. That little bit of water we put in there at the beginning really helps things get going. Otherwise that cabbage takes a long time to break down. So the lid goes back on. Alright, the cabbage is broken down pretty good. We're going to add a little bit of thyme. Probably about a half of a teaspoon out of your silverware drawer. Eh, maybe a little more. My go-to herb. We'll stir that in. Our cabbage is looking pretty good. We've almost boiled the liquid out. So we've added a whole pound of our good Nebraska lean ground beef. We're going to chop that up and brown this right in the mix. There's not a lot of grease that comes out of this, so we can cook it right in our mixture. Hamburger's almost brown, so to the mix, we're going to add about four cloves. Oh, let's go six cloves, because I love garlic. We'll stir that in, we'll wake that garlic up. Now while this simmers, we've been cooking on high this whole time. Now that we have the lid off, we're just basically cooking the liquid out of this. And don't be afraid to get a little color on it, too. Makes it even better when you get a little color on this. Now let me tell you about the calorie breakdown of this. With the hamburger and the cabbage, we have 1,600 calories in this whole pot here. So we want about 200 calories of this if we're following our plug-and-play diet. You've got 100 calories for your tortilla, which we use for the wrap. 
100 calories of cheese and 200 calories of this mixture. So 200 calories of this mixture would be one eighth of it. So if you figure, you know, smooth all this out and cut your pan into quarters, that's a fourth. That would be an eighth right there. So you can have this whole thing in your wrap right here if you're using cheese. If you're not using cheese, which you don't have to, you could go with uh, a little bit more of that. So 200, 300 calories, you could use, um, say this is your quarter, this is your eighth, you could use about that much more right there. And it's not an exact science, you don't have to be perfect, you just got to be close. Now that we're almost done, we're going to put in the last ingredients, which is two of these kind of level eating spoons of our curry powder. And I know what you're thinking right now. Ooh, curry powder, no thank you. And I'm right there with you, folks. That store-bought curry powder you buy at the store, anything but good. This stuff, on the other hand, is absolutely amazing. I was turned on to this by the people at our Chinese restaurant here in town. I ordered Singapore rice noodles, and it has this spice in it. And I said, what is that fantastic spice? It's got just a little bite to it, and I just couldn't place it. And she brought this jar out and offered to sell me some. But I said, no, I'll find it. And I found it on the Internet. You can find it, uh, Madras curry powder. That curry powder you find in your spice aisle at your grocery store is just a generalization somebody came up with, and I don't care for it either. And curry can be many things. Um, there's so many different types of curry, you can't just have one spice and say it's curry. There's so, so many different uh, versions of curry. Curry actually means to bring together, and that's what they do when they curry things. They bring different foods together in a mixture. So um, I'm right there with you with that store-bought curry powder. But try this stuff. It really sets this over the top in lots of other dishes too. All right, we've got a little color on our mixture. Start to get little brown bits in it. So we've cooked all the water out. It's kind of frying now. So we're going to turn this off because it's done. Let's put this thing together. Got our wrap, and we got one ounce of cheese, which is 100 calories. We need one eighth of this mixture. We'll put right on there. That'll melt that cheese because it's good and hot. Now, Nebraskans, when they think cheese, they think Velveeta. To me, that's not cheese, and Nebraskans eat way too much Velveeta. So, use a regular cheddar cheese, any cheese you want. If Velveeta is your thing, go for it, but not mine. Okay, we've got our mixture in here. We're going to roll this up burrito style. Bring in the edges. Bring that top over. Pull your filling back a little bit. Continue to roll that edge in as you roll. Just like that. Now do yourself a favor, folks. Get you some of these foil sheets. I keep them in the kitchen. And you want to roll this warm mixture up in this tortilla. And that's going to kind of glue all this together. That tortilla will become one with itself. And when you eat it, it's not spilling all over the place. That's why your taco truck burritos are so good. Because they steam in there. Just like hot dogs at the ballpark. It's all steamy inside. That's why we do that. So we're going to let this rest about 10 minutes. And it will be supper time. I think the best thing about these runs of wraps is you don't have to stir up a bunch of bread dough because that takes time. You can literally whip this together in 30 minutes and you have supper. Otherwise you're letting your bread rise and rolling it out and, and filling the, the rolls up with the mixture and all that. Then you got to bake it. Much easier and you still get a lot of the great runs of flavor. Now Kelly likes to take her runs of wrap, put a little olive oil in the skillet or whichever oil she likes, and give it a little grilling in there, kind of make the outside a little crunchy. That's another option.
kind of like a crunch wrap at Taco Bell. Doesn't that look yummy? Now, if you're afraid of the curry or just want, don't want to go the expense of buying that, leave it out. You're still going to have a fantastic dish without it. Or use whatever spice profile you really enjoy. Try that in there. Here we go. Can't wait. See how that's all kind of glued together now? Y'all got to try this. So good. And we have six more meals in that pan. So, very yummy. So, I'm going to enjoy my supper, or we are. So, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us here at the farm. Good grub. Or as my buddy Doug would say, that's a good cracker. See ya.